Good morning. It's so nice to connect with you today. My name's Leanne Peters. I'm from templeofbalance.com.au, Temple of Balance on Facebook and Temple of Balance on YouTube. And I'm here to pull some cards and share some guidance. And I better double check my dates today um, for Monday the 19th, Tuesday the 20th and Wednesday the 21st of February. So welcome. Um, I'm coming to you live now from Tasmania, Australia, where it is Monday the 19th of February here, and the time is 7.20 a.m. So welcome. I want to send out a big, extra special big welcome to my Temple of Balance patrons, my Pillar of Light members, and all of those of you who support my work through my website. Thank you so much for your support, and thank you so much to everyone who's been supporting my birthday sales this month. I've got my big, a big crazy sale. I'm not really sure that I should have done it, but I have. Is half price spirit guide drawings, so they're $82.50 or something. Um, I don't think they've been $80 for probably 12 or 15 years. So uh, if you want to take advantage of that, because I don't think I've, yeah, I haven't done it for so long. Uh, and I probably won't do it again. Uh, please have a look on my website if you want to take advantage of that. Half price spirit guide drawings. Um, currently I have quite a long order list. So I think I'm taking bookings now for the week of the 29th of March. So um, there's going to be quite the wait if you book soon. But it doesn't matter. It's still, if you've been thinking about it, it's a great time to have a spirit guide drawing so that's happening now um and anyway i'm here to pull some cards i'm very keen to see what the energy wants to be or wants to share or wants to support us with for these next few days um, so if you're new to watching what i'll be doing is using my oracle cards that i created i've got uh, 110 cards in this deck of two combined different decks so we have speed of light oracle cards sorry the animal kingdom oracle cards and the speed of light oracle cards here with the black backs so i'll be using this deck of cards to find the best cards that the majority of us need <coughs> oh, excuse me for monday tuesday wednesday that's the 19th, the 20th, and the 21st of February. So I recommend that you take on board what feels right and what resonates and what fits into your life easily. The things that seem like I'm talking directly to you. Pay attention to those things and let the rest go. And let's allow ourselves to be surprised. Wow, thank you, everybody. Welcome, Lisa and Anita and Glenda. Thanks for sharing, Glenda. It's lovely to see you all. Thank you for sharing as well, Lisa. That's lovely of you. All right, let's grab or look for the best card that the majority of us need for Monday, the 19th of February. Now, if it's still Sunday for you, you can have a look at my video from Friday, which includes Sunday's guidance. So the best card for Monday, the 19th of February, for the majority of us, is... We'll go with this card. It's an Animal Kingdom Oracle. And it's this. Oh, the fox. The fox is very inspiring to me. It's card eight. And it says to find a way. To find a way to carve out this new path for ourselves. To find a way to make something work that perhaps has been, uh, we've been doubtful about or uncertain about. To find a way to carve out this new path for ourselves now. That it's up to us to find a way to make it work. If we want to, it to happen, if we want to make it work, we can find a way to make it work. If a part of us doesn't want to make it work and a part of us doesn't really want to do it, then we're not going to find a way to make it work. So I guess the first thing to sit with on Monday, especially if we're figuring out how to do something do we really want to do it <laughs> that's probably the best place to start because if we don't we're not going to really put much effort into finding a way to carve out that path for ourselves if we do want to do it and we're up for the challenge then we'll find a way to make it work so there is a sense of motivation a sense of determination with this particular card 
comes mentally and it comes physically. So mentally focused, mentally determined, mentally getting through, getting something done, carving out that path that we need to carve out now. And physically backing up our thoughts with physical action. Otherwise, we're just talking about it, aren't we? And we're not doing anything. So we can talk and talk and talk till the cows come home. But if we're not backing up our talk with action, with physical action, uh, then what's the point of, of sending ourselves crazy with thought? So backing up our thoughts with action might be something we're also considering. But we might not be considering that Monday yet because I think... It feels to me like, first of all, let's work out if we want to do it. And if we want to do it, let's figure out how to carve out that path. If we don't really want to do it or our heart's not in it, then maybe we won't need to bother trying to carve out that path and finding a way. So let's find a way and see how that fits for us on Monday. Good morning, Tanya. And Anita says, that's spot on. That's what I'm doing, sorting out at the moment. What I'm doing, sorting at the moment. Yes. Let's see how it falls into place. So, now I'm looking for the best card for Tuesday, the 20th of February. So, Tuesday, the 20th of February. And the best card for the majority of us is this. It's another animal kingdom. And it's this. Ah, it's Lunar Cycle. Oh, that's probably a better place to put it. <laughs> I can actually see. Uh, the Lunar Cycle. So it's a featured timing card and it has further instructions here which say to take the second card from the top of the deck. So we go down to deck card number two, which is the support card. So these two cards have come up together for a reason. We're going to look at them separately first, then we'll look at their relationship together. So, Lunar Cycle, this is a featured timing card. There are four timing cards in the Animal Kingdom Oracle cards. And um, this one talks about the cycle of a month. So we're looking at over the next few weeks or for the next month period. So month period, so 20th of February to approximately the 20th of March, which takes us up to the equinox actually. So over this next month, there might be some things that we're considering or putting into place or doing or whatever it might be, but it's likely connected with this card, card 35, support. This is a support card and it would only come up if we needed support and comfort and reassurance that we're not alone, that we're going to get through whatever it is we're going through. So it's, it says comfort, loved ones and reassurance. Our loved ones are coming close around us at this time. And in fact, we may have been feeling them around over these last few days as our mind has drifted thinking of them. And we may be looking at old photos and memories of them and we can probably feel them coming close. So our loved ones are around us a lot at the moment and they're coming in and offering us love and comfort and encouragement and reassurance that everything's going to be okay, that um, we're going to get through whatever it is that we're going through right now. So over the next month, over the next few weeks, we've been encouraged to really look at how we can um, be more supportive of ourselves. Maybe there is someone around us, someone in our care, or you know, someone close to us in our sort of closer circle of friends or family that needs some support right now. Um, so maybe us noticing that and then stepping up and supporting them a little more than we usually do might be really helpful for them. Um, maybe there's support that we need that we might need to ask for help with or look at how we can step up and support ourselves a little more. Maybe by thinking more favourably and supportive, healthier thoughts that are more supportive for us. Maybe that's a good support that we can look at um, shifting or strengthening within us so you know we can be so hard on ourselves mentally and verbally as well we can be so cruel and so hard and so harm harmful really to ourselves so even just getting our thoughts back into line if you like uh, getting our thoughts back into line and looking at how supportive our thoughts are how supportive our words are to us 
And if they're not that supportive, if we're constantly putting ourselves down, if we're constantly telling us that we're, ourselves that we're stupid or whatever it might be, then changing that language can be quite incredible, the support that that then shifts in us. Because actually, if we're more supportive of ourselves, then we can be more supportive for other people. And other people will also be more supportive of us. So the more we push support away, especially if we're pushing it away from ourselves, you know, mentally and verbally, um, if we're pushing that away, then it's going to be very difficult for us to even receive the support that other people may want to be offering us. We might unconsciously push that away too. So let's make sure we're supporting ourselves um, at this time, especially on Tuesday, but looking at it too over the next few weeks. So it might be a great time, you know, it takes three weeks or so to reset our mind thoughts into um, a new habit of thinking. So it could be too a good time to really look seriously at what we're telling ourselves about ourselves. Are these thoughts supportive? Are they reassuring? Are they hopeful and positive and encouraging? Or are they quite awful? And if they are, now's the time to do something about that. So we've got a month. We've got the next few weeks to really shift up that support if we need it. So it's nice to know that we are supported though, especially if we've been feeling isolated or alone or like we're doing everything on our own. So feel the support coming in. You're not alone at all. You're never alone. We are never alone. It's our lower mind usually that makes us think that we're alone so can you step out can you meet some new people can you support yourself better through encouraging words and thoughts how can you look at creating a supportive environment that you live in that then attracts supportive people to you and it does do that so get out there meet some new people if you've got no one around Keep the community spirit alive. Look for community events. A lot of community events are probably close to closing because of the lack of support from people in the community. So step into those community initiatives. Start a community initiative if that's something that you need to do. So thank you. That's for Tuesday. Now I'm looking for the best card for Wednesday, the 21st of February. So Wednesday the 21st of February and the best card that the majority of us need hello, is this. It's a Speed of Light Oracle card and it's this. It's Creation card 29 and it says Source, Uncoil, Light and Authentic. This is about coming out of our hiding place, especially um, coming out of a place of feeling tightly coiled up within ourselves where we might be holding back or hiding ourselves away or coiled up tightly maybe we are feeling um, unconfident maybe we're feeling hesitant about taking steps forward in our life or living life perhaps living life itself maybe we're feeling hesitant about life and hesitant about putting ourselves out there maybe we're feeling just unconfident and unsure and doubtful within ourselves so there is this tightly coiled feeling that has us pull back pull back and if we if this is not just a one-off thing because of the day and we've been sort of living in this hesitant unconfident way for some time we it is part of ourselves holding us back so there is this sense of when life is happening we're kind of um, retreating, we're pulling away, we're sort of living with this, like a hesitation or this caution um, underneath everything that we do. It's like a fear and it holds us back instead of speaking up or stepping up for things, we may hold back sort of waiting to see what's going to happen. And um, I think this is normal, especially if we've been in unsafe places or environments or situations where we've been say under attack or things have taken us by surprise that have pulled us down then a part of our way of coping with that is to hold back and hesitate and be cautious 
you know, with every step that we take. So hopefully you're not in a space like that that's more constantly there for you. And if it is, then it feels like Wednesday is a great opportunity. And in fact, over these next few days, a great opportunity to look at where we're feeling tight and coiled up and held back and hesitant. Where are we or how are we, are we living in this underlying fear within that sort of ripples out into everything that we do in life? And if so, what can we do about changing that way of living and changing that um, underlying fear that always seems to be there, that hesitation and that feeling of not being good enough or not being important or not being valuable or, or capable or able to sort of speak up and have value in this world or value in your communications and conversations and relationships with other people. Um, and living in that hesitant way is not a really nice, it's not nice at all, a uh, nice way of living. So it feels to me like an opportunity. So if you've been living kind of that deeply in it or if you're just feeling a bit hesitant at the moment, it feels to be a great energy at these next few days to sort of get in a more supportive mindset. Um, you know, really think about or pay attention to what we're thinking and what we're saying, um, especially about ourselves and our life and how supportive are these thoughts and these words. How much are we actually holding ourselves back in what we're thinking and what we're saying? Because we might be holding ourselves back more than we realise. We might think that it's, oh, because we've got no money or, oh, because I've got no opportunities. Oh, because I'm getting too old or, oh, because I live here in this community or whatever it might be. We might be, it's easy to blame other things and external things for our own hesitation and holding back. But these cards are suggesting that maybe we're contributing to this at least, if not um, the source of this hesitation and this fear and this holding back. Can we, can we reassure ourselves that it is, it is safe for us now to speak up and it is safe for us to step up and step out of that coiled place, to step out of the cave and open up and see what's out here in the world that we can experience and who can we meet out here in this vast, amazing world out here, out there, out of our comfort zone, out of the cave. So something wants to open up inside us. A light wants to come out. Um, something within us wants to relax and release the tension of tightness and hesitation in us so that we can open up like uncoiling of something and come out into the world, come out and, and tap into that light, that part of our personality that is who we are. So there's something really true and authentic and being really honest with ourselves is going to be key here. But there's something really um, authentic that comes from this opening up and this coiling. In fact, holding tightly and coiled and holding back in hesitation and fear is not who we are. That's the fear uh, the fear, I guess we could say, in the driver's seat, steering our life wherever it wants to take us. That's not our true and authentic self. So let's figure out where we're at. Let's let our, or allow our light, our true and authentic self, uh, let's open up and allow that part of us into the driver's seat as we get to know that part of ourselves again. And this is this might be temporary state for some of us, something to refine, something to tighten up uh, in some ways but loosen up and open up with at the same time for some of you perhaps you've been living this way for a long time for as long as you can remember and if that's the case and this is a great opportunity to shift some of those limitations and insecurities that we've been feeling inside ourselves how much longer will we allow ourselves to live in that fear and that hesitation that perhaps has been underlying everything we do everything we think everything that we say so our card for Wednesday is creation, uncoiling ourselves. So there are our three our cards for the three days. I'm going to pull a theme card in just a minute. Before I do, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. If you have enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button, please. Show us some love. Please comment or share if you're inspired to. 
And if you'd prefer to connect more privately, please send us a message through our website. If you're watching on Facebook, if, as if it matters, but maybe you want to hit the follow button on my uh, Temple of Balance Facebook page. And if you're watching on YouTube, maybe you want to hit the subscribe button so that you can see more videos in the future. So Temple of Balance on YouTube. If you ever have a break from Facebook, oh, shock horror. If you ever want to break from Facebook, you can find these videos on YouTube. So um, please have a look at my website if you'd like to learn more about the card decks that I've used today that I've created and illustrated. You can learn more about those on my website. You can learn more about the things that I do. And if you want to have a spirit guide drawing, um, I recommend having a look on my website because I've got this ridiculous <laughs> half price sale um, on at the moment. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, I'm taking bookings now at the last week of March. So um, I'm quite booked up for spirit guide drawings, but it doesn't matter. I can put you on the list. We can go to May or June. So book away if you want to take advantage of this half price uh, spirit guide drawing sale so that ends on friday so check it out if you're interested you can find it on my website templeofbalance.com.au um, and if you're in hobart or tasmania please try and come to my exhibition my solo exhibition that i've been working incredibly hard for um, on especially december january and february um, it's called initiation into the unknown and you'll find it uh, at the Social Gallery at Salamanca Arts Centre in Hobart. Um, and we open on Wednesday the 28th of February, which must be coming, getting close to a week away. And uh, the last day is on Monday the 4th of March. So you can find more about that too on my website and um, on my Facebook pages. Thank you so much. Let's grab the best theme card for Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. That's the 19th, the 20th and the 21st of February. The best theme card to bring these days together for the majority of us now is this. It's a Speed of Light Oracle card. Oh yes, I love this card so much. It's the White Tiger and it's a featured card. It has further instructions up here which say to split the deck and take the top card. So split, and we've got this, the elephant. Well, this is easy. This is very self-explanatory, but we can go a little deeper with it too. So we've got these two cards have come up together for a reason for our theme. We're going to look at them separately first, then we'll look at their relationship together. The white tiger, card 48. It says schedule, routine, adjustment, and management so this is about looking at our priorities looking at how we spend our time looking at our routine over monday tuesday wednesday make sure our routine and our priorities are matching for one and make sure that we are, are um that we're practicing um our priorities the way we want our priorities to be now sometimes things change and things happen and we've got to throw our routine out the window um, often to our routines changing so as we change our priorities change and our routine changes sometimes we're kind of tra like a train just pushing ahead um, thinking that we have to live the same routine or the same way even though we're changing and our life is changing so I find if my priorities and my routine and the way I spend my time if they're not matched up I feel very um, uh, what would you say out of balance very uncomfortable and unsettled um, I have to have them lined up so every now and then probably once a month or at a time when I'm going through a big change when I've moved house or some big commitment I've had is finishing or some big commitment starting so unless it's something like that every month I would sit I do sit in my journal sit with my journal and I make a list of my priorities and what I want my priorities to be. What's top of the list, what's second, what's third, what's fourth. I need to be able to prioritise what's the most important so I can get my head around and get focused on my priorities. And I might have, say, up to 10 things as a priority. Depends what I've got going on. At this time, it might be five things because I've released a lot of commitments from last year. So I look at what I want my priorities to be you know, what I choose, 
of what I what is priority. You know, working, tending to my family, of course, tending to my needs. These are all going to be pretty high up there. But there'll be other things as well that come in. And then I look at a step away from that, and then I want to look at um, what is actually taking up my time. What am I spending a lot of time doing or thinking about what's taking up a lot of air time at this moment and make a priority of those. So what I've been thinking about a lot, what I've been doing a lot and and writing down what seems to be priority that's playing out that is actually happening in my life. And then I look at where these things match up. Sometimes what I want to be priority one might be down at priority three and what I want to be priority four might be priority one. There might be good reason for that so I might be able to leave it but there might be no good reason. So then I need to look at shuffling my schedule and shuffling how I spend my time so that it pretty much matches with what I want my priorities to be. But I also need to be flexible because things happen sometimes and you've got to throw all your rules out the window and you've got to tend to something um, urgently sometimes. You know, if your body's not feeling great or someone needs assistance, then you've got to sort of put your routine, your priorities temporarily out the window. But um, working out your priorities and your routine is really helpful to create structure and foundation in our life that we can then build our life upon. Um, and I find it extremely valuable in helping me stay focused with the things that I want to do and need to do. And it also eliminates procrastination and trying to delay and avoid something. So the white tiger here is very much about those priorities and that routine and our schedule. We may need to make some adjustments to our schedule and how we spend our time. And um, also perhaps there's something we need to make time for and it's probably this family commitments with the elephant card seven so the elephant specifically talks about the family so for some of us simply these two cards coming up this may speak to you that maybe you need to make more priority time uh, with your family you know maybe there's a parent or a child or a sibling or someone that you're close to that you haven't connected with for a while because life's got in the way maybe at this time it's good to make some contact with them and say, do you want to catch up for a whatever? And um, make the time for that commitment or for that maintaining that relationship. Every relationship requires maintenance and effort from our closest, more intimate relationships to all the way out to our, our more um, extended family or friends. Every relationship requires effort. It takes effort to reach out and make sure that our our friend or our family member is doing okay. It makes effort to have a conversation with them, to call them up, to um, ask them if I can, if we can visit or invite them to visit. You know, we have to maintain our relationships, all of them, so that they remain healthy and strong. So the family commitment card, the elephant here, on its own, it simply talks about our commitments in the family, if that's applicable to you. Um, it also reminds us to go the distance. So there is this sort of foundational, plodding, enduring sort of uh, pace that we might find. I'm thinking of the elephant, you know, just sort of um, pacing, putting its feet down in a really um, direct and strong way, going that distance that we might um, be considering at the moment or looking at in our life. So how can we go the distance? How can we... Um, run the marathon if you like how can we see this thing through to the end well part of that if that speaks to you would be looking at our schedule and our priorities and how we spend our time so to write a book it doesn't happen overnight to write a book you write one word one paragraph one chapter at a time and yes it might feel like it goes on forever but uh, you know eventually you get the book written so you're going the marathon, you're going a little bit at a time, uh, assigning small chunks of time aside for this thing that you want to do. So a little bit here, a little bit there, regularly, 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 doing your taxes, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there perhaps, so that you don't have it all to do at once at tax time. You know, so really pacing ourselves to make the most of our time, really, and our schedule and our routine. So what is it that you need to consider with your schedule and routine and your priorities? Are they matching up at the moment? And if not, what can you do to shift them about? 
So thanks for connecting. Have a fantastic couple of days and I'll see you again very soon. Thank you.